The Diels-Alder reaction is, uh, is extremely famous, and one reason why is because of its use in synthesis. When you're trying to create very large and complicated molecules, the Diels-Alder reaction is excellent uh, at forming rings. So it's, it's one possible tool for forming rings and reactions. And this one in particular is extremely cool because this is an intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction. The Diels-Alder reaction takes place within the same molecule. And this is an example from a synthesis by J.D. White and B.G. Sheldon, and this is from the Journal of Organic Chemistry. And you can see that the molecule on the left is going to undergo an intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction to form the molecule on the right and to form two rings out of the process. So when we start to analyze this, and uh, our, our goal is to, uh, is to write the mechanism to show the molecule on the left turning into the molecule on the right. And so we can, we can start to analyze the molecule on the left by first identifying the diene. And so I think we can see that over here is our diene, right? We have our two double bonds over there on the left. On the right is our dienophile, right? So if we look over here, we can see there, there is our dienophile. And there are also some electron withdrawing groups attached to, uh, attached to that double bond, right? So we can think about this as being an electron withdrawing group and this as being an electron withdrawing group. And when we look at the product, we can, we can see that those two electron drawing groups are on the same side of the double bond. And uh, for my product, right, they're also on the same side because they're all, they're both, these guys are both on dashes, right? And, uh, we can see here that the endo product is the one shown on the right. So this is one of the possible products that can form from this intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction. And so far, we've been assuming that the endo product is the major product formed. You can't always do that with an intramolecular Diels-Alder reaction. Sometimes the exo product is formed, and it depends on many things, and things like steric hindrance come into play. But for this example, since there are two carbonyls attached to the dienophile, uh, that's one theory why the endo product is favored. So we're, we're going to try to show the mechanism for this uh, to convert the molecule to the left to the molecule on the right. But if I think about the Diels-Alder reaction that would form with the molecule as to how I've drawn it on the left, right, I would form a bond between this carbon and this carbon and a bond between that carbon and that carbon. Well, that would be the exo approach, right? So that, that would not be the one we're going for. We're going for the endo. And so, and so to, to rotate the molecule on the left um, into a position that's better for the endo, again, this is easier using a, using a three-dimensional molecular model, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this bond right here. So if you have your model set, you can make this and rotate that bond right there. And let's go ahead and draw uh, what we would get, what would be the conformation here. So if we rotate that part, right, let's go ahead and sketch in what we would have. Well, this part of the molecule would remain the same, right? So I go ahead and draw that in here. So I have my double bond, my double bond. And let's see if I had this oxygen here. Now that would mean that this carbonyl is now on this side, right? And now when I draw it, my double bond would look like that. And then the hydrogen would move over on this side. And then this carbonyl would also end up on this side. So I'll go ahead and draw on this carbonyl, this carboxylic acid like that. And then the methyl group would be on that side. So when I think about uh, connecting those now, right, this one would bond Right, you'd form a bond here between those two carbons. You'd form a bond between these two carbons. And this would be an endo approach, because you can see that the carbonyls would be closer to the developing pi bond. Right, so let's go ahead and try to show this in, in three dimensions. And so this one is obviously trickier than the ones that we've done before. Right, so if I wanted to show this in, uh, in three dimensions, right, so let's go ahead and try to draw it. First, I'm going to draw the diene up here. And uh, when I draw my diene, I can see that I have a methyl group coming out to the right. So that's methyl group. So let me go ahead and identify my carbons here. I'm going to say that this carbon right here, and then magenta is this carbon right there. So there's a methyl group going out to the right. And since I have to worry about stereochemistry, I know there's also a hydrogen coming out this way like that. When I go over, when I go over to this side, right, so I'm going to look at this carbon now. That carbon is this carbon. And I know there's a, there's, there's a carbon coming off of that. So for right now, I'm just going to draw a carbon coming off it, and I, I will come back to that connection later. And I also know that there's a hydrogen going towards the center, right? So there's a hydrogen going that way. So when I, when I draw my dienophile approaching it, uh, sometimes it's better just to go ahead and draw your, your, your dienophile approaching it, and then you can connect the tether, uh, connecting your, your, your two portions of the molecule. So that's one approach to drawing this. So I'm going to go ahead and show the double bond on the dienophile 
on the dienophile like that, and then I would have my carboxylic acid out back this way because I know that my product is going to be an endo approach. So my carbonyl would be back on this side, and then this carbonyl would also be back on this side. And then I'd have my hydrogen out here, and then my methyl group out, out right here like that. So let me go ahead and highlight those carbons so we can follow those as well. So I'm going to say that this carbon over here in green, right, is this carbon over here like that. And then and this carbon over here in red, right, would be this carbon over here in red like that. And, and now we can go ahead and connect the tether uh, to complete the, the intramolecular portion of this, right? So I know that this carbonyl is attached to an oxygen, and I know that oxygen is bonded to is bonded to, let me go ahead and highlight this carbon here. Let me, let me pick a color here. And uh, let's go ahead and choose this color, right? So that oxygen is bonded to this carbon right here. And, uh, and so let me go ahead and connect them, right? So that carbon would be this carbon like that. And so I can just go ahead and draw a bond that connects these. And so it's a little complicated, but we've, we've kind of drawn, uh, we, we have drawn our, our molecule and we've drawn it in the, uh, with an endo approach right now. So I know for my mechanism, right, I'm going to form a bond between this, the carbon in, in dark blue and the carbon in red, and also bond between the carbon in magenta and the carbon in green here like that. So let's let's go ahead and get a little space and uh, let's go ahead and, and draw that product here. Okay, so let me uh, let me go ahead and uh, and show that. So again this is this is just more complicated than the ones we've done before, but we can use the same the same technique that we did before. We can show the formation of my ring, right? So I know this is going to form a ring, so I'm gonna just go ahead and do it like I've always done it here. I know that my 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 double bond is going to form back here on my ring. And so when I start to identify my carbons, right, let's start with the carbon in magenta. This would be the carbon in magenta. And remember, my inside substituent is the hydrogen. So my inside substituent is going to go up. So let me go ahead and show my, my hydrogen and the magenta carbon going up. There's also a methyl group. The methyl group is going to go down relative to this ring. So the methyl group is going to go down relative to that ring right there. So I get a rehybridization of, of the carbon in magenta from sp2 to sp3 hybridized and that would be the stereochemistry let's go ahead and do the uh the the stereochemistry at the carbon in dark blue here so the carbon in uh in relatively dark blue would be this one right here so that's this carbon and once again there's a hydrogen attached to that carbon as well and that hydrogen is going to go up relative to the ring right it's an inside substituent and then the carbon in light blue right would be going relatively down so i can go ahead and draw a bond out here and make that my carbon in light blue Right, so that would be this carbon like that. When I when I think about when I think about the carbon in green, the carbon in green corresponds to this carbon, and so the methyl group would still be going out in this direction like that. So that the carbon in green, there's a methyl group. There's also a carboxylic acid, which would be right back here. So I can go ahead and sketch in my carboxylic acid like that. And next, I move on to the carbon in red, which would be this carbon like that. And once again, the hydrogen would be going out this way. So this carbon rehybridizes to form an sp3 hybridized carbon, and the carbonyl would be still going back in space, or at least that's how I'll draw it right now, and that carbonyl is attached to an oxygen. And finally, we can go ahead and connect uh, the tether here, right? So the oxygen is now bonded to the carbon in light blue. So this is our product. Um, it's just a little bit hard to see the stereochemistry, right? So this is the folded, the folded product, and to unfold my product, I can get a better view of it. So if I go ahead and unfold my product there. I'm going to go ahead and show, let me get some more room down here. So if I, if I unfold my product, I'm going to get my ring, my six-membered ring, right, like that, with my double bond right here. And my carbon in magenta would be this one right here. So once again, if I am, if I am staring down at this molecule on the right, the first substituent I would see on the carbon magenta is this hydrogen here. So the hydrogen would be coming out at me in space. So go ahead and show the hydrogen coming out at me. And then the methyl group would be going away from me. So I can go ahead and draw the methyl group away from me like that. Next, I move on to the carbon 
carbon in green, right? So the carbon in green would be the one right here. And uh, this time I can see that this methyl group, right? That's the one when I when I unfold it, that one's going to be up in space relative to the plane of the ring. So that methyl group is going to be up in space. And when the when when the product unfolds, the carboxylic acid would therefore be down in space, right? So if I go ahead and draw the carboxylic acid, it would be going away from us. Next, I move on to the carbon in red. So that's this carbon right here. And once again, this is the hydrogen that would can be coming out in space at me, right? So that hydrogen would be coming out in space like that. And the uh, this ester here, right, at the carbon in red, uh, would be going away from me in space. So I can go ahead and, and show the other carbonyl, right, going away from me like that. And that oxygen's it, that carbonyl is attached to an oxygen like that. When I look at the carbon in relatively dark blue, right, that would be this carbon right here. And I can see that once again, this hydrogen will be going up right relative to the ring. So I can draw that hydrogen as being up relative to the ring. So I draw it as a wedge. And uh, and then going to the carbon in light blue, that would be going away from me in space. So I draw that as a dash, right? So going away from me in space to connect it to the carbon in lighter blue. And then obviously the oxygen is directly bonded to the to the lighter blue like that. So we can go ahead and complete our ring. And so we've done it. We formed we formed two rings. And if you compare this molecule to what we started with, you'll see that it is the correct molecule. We drew the correct ring here. So the endo approach, the endo approach forms forms a ring here that has that has these two hydrogens, right? This, this, so this hydrogen is on the same side as this hydrogen. So we create a cis ring down here. So this portion will, will give us a cis ring like right there. And uh, it's possible to make that ring trans, to, depending on what kind of approach you're using here. But we were just trying to show the uh, the mechanism to form the endo product for this intramolecular diels alder reaction. And, and this, is, this, is a, this is a beautiful mechanism, and it's just extremely cool how you can make this molecule um, um, so easily, just understanding um, the stereochemistry uh, for Diels-Alder reactions.